Okay, so um, today um, I'm going to, to be talking about the chapter 15 of the R package book. Let me share my screen. Actually, um, I, I don't know if in, 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 any of you guys have actually uh, ever um, worked with uh, R plus, uh, with C plus plus or actually basic, basic C code. Because uh, the uh, what this chapter addresses is basically the use of C plus plus code inside an in, in R package. And the the first point that I would like to address is exactly why to use C plus plus code inside an in R package. Because especially um, if you are just doing data analysis, actually we um, we talk a lot, a lot about about this talks about um, of some common workflows that that are especially useful for data analysis and other workflows that are uh, like more computationally intensive and need to be highly optimized. So most of the time, if you are just doing data analysis and um, you don't have any bottlenecks, you don't have to wait hours for your analysis to be running, you 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 will never have to write C code or C++ code. Uh, you, you, you will mostly be okay using R and R is extremely efficient for data analysis. But in, in some cases, you will find some bottlenecks in, in your functions, in your, in your package that using um, um, a lower level programming, programming language can address the, the bottleneck the bottlenecks more easily. Um, and um, usually those languages are considered considered hard and hard to program on them. So if you want to build a data frame in C++, for, for example, you would need to be really um, detailed and you need to, to know details about um, where in the computer memory it's going to be stored each cell of the of your data or of your data frame, for example. And usually, when we are working in a data analysis, we don't want to to think about this kind of programming details about um, where uh, if, if uh, for example, if you want to change one cell of your data frame, you, you, don't, you don't really need to know where in your computer memory that, that data is saved, right? You just want to change the variable and it will work. But for some com um, computer intensive activities, it's important to address this kind of, um, of details. And actually, um, uh, and C++ is a language that offers the, uh, uh, it offers a, a lot of, um, in the same way that R have a, a rouge set of, of packages that you can extend the basic function, functionality of R, C++ already have a lot of um, good libraries and especially robust libraries for working um, with different functionalities, especially uh, addressing um, operations in the, in the system itself. For example, if you need to run code on a GPU, on a, on a graphic card, you have good C, C++ libraries to do that. And usually they are more, um, they are faster and, and less prone to error than using a Python library, than using an a, a, a library that was built just in R. And, and why did this is happen, and, and why it happens, it's cause uh, C++, C and C++ are languages that are mo more closely uh, related to the computer code itself. What the computer understands is, is a bunch of zero and one, the bits that goes to the CPU and 
perform operations of the, that, that are predefined in the CPU. Um, and usually we, each, comp each programming language has a, a, a lot of more, abs more abstraction ab above the, the operations that the CPU can, can, com com can compute. And usually we say that R is a high level language because we have any kind of abstraction that we, we need. And, and usually C and C++ you need to, you have, it, it, it already is much more abstract than working directly with um, machine code, but you are, you are working much more closer to how the computer itself works. And um, in the R language, especially if you are using the R Studio IDE, uh, you have really good um, workflows of how to integrate just parts of C++ code inside uh, in R code, and, and especially for the R, uh, for the C++ um, program, you can exchange code between, you can exchange um, variables and and objects between between the in R function and the C++ function. So um, it's kind of easy to get started just building parts of your code in C++, then, then building a, a C++ library from the start, especially if you, if you already program, if you're already building an R package or, or you have already a, an R package built and you just want to optimize specific parts of it. Of it. Um, um, actually, um, programming in C++ is not the, the topic of the of this chapter. Um, and the Hadley, Hadley Weekend other book, the Advanced R, actually have a, a specific chapter on 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 rewriting R code in C++. That is. It, that that is if you have a specific part of your code that that you want to rewrite in in C plus plus I oh my computer is slow okay it, it I, I actually recommended it's actually recommended in the in the R package book that you read this this chapter because here you have um, specific um, examples and things especially. How to get uh, a code that is already written in 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 R and, and how to convert it to C plus um, plus. So we we are not going to cover all the all the all the the how to to use C plus plus code. Um, and another and it, it's really important to address the the R C P P library because the this library rcpp was it, it, it's it's come from c plus plus and r r bind c plus plus it comes from jirk edel bottle it, it was it was published in a paper in 2011 and also in after in this book this this book in 2014 the um and G, it, it was a uh, Jirka Dobuto worked in a lot of things in, in R during that time. And, and he worked a lot in this integration of C code inside R. And he created this package. What the RCPP package does is um, offering um, the same kind of, um, of workflows that you already use to build an, an R function and documenting it, for example, using um, the R oxygen tags, like you can use R, R, R oxygen tags inside the C++ code and you have some R, R oxygen tags in, in the R code also to import C++ code. So the, the RCPP package was the, 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 the the fundamental stone for, for for this integration inside inside our package, and also, but recently, um, recently the R Studio team also 
created another package that is this C++11, CPP11. It's a, an R package that they actually, they started working on this package like last year in 2020. So it's really, really hasn't. It was, it is supposed to be lighter and have fewer dependencies than the, the RCPP. CPP package, because the RCP package is kind of more old and has a lot of other dependencies. It was a, a shrunken version and actually more modern. The CPP 11 comes from the 11th version of C++ that have some, some differences from the, the basic C++. <laughs> so it was like a newer version. Um, they actually say that, that they have, it, it actually don't, don't have, any dependence, you you just need this the CPP eleven package, and you can build CPP code. Um, it, it has some differences in the uh, co when compared to the RCPP code that is shown in the in this chapter. We will, I will try to address some. Um, here in the in the chapter, we have an example of how to. This is a, a C plus plus code. I, I would like to first address that. There is a lot of similarities with, with what we already use in, in NAR. For example, you have this kind of header that is the same that we use in NAR for like a, a library called, called a library in the name of the package. We have these include tags to, to say that we are importing uh, a C++ header. Header is the name of... Um, it's the, the same idea of a package, but it's like a, a file, could, could be a package or, or just a file with a lot of functions inside them. You don't need to be a, like a, a package that is in, installed in the system, things like that. You can just have a file with some C++ um, code inside it, and it's called a header. That's why the, the it's actually the name of a file, the rcpp.h, it's a header file. Um, and especially this, this header is to make it possible to the RCPP header and this using namespace RCPP part of the code is especially important. So um, our objects can be used to the, inside the, the C++ code. That's why, why you, you need to import the, this, this actually the C++ code that 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 talks with the R code, um, and actually in C++ you have these double slashes as as comment just to make clear. Like for example, here you have this this hashtag symbol. It's it's not a a comment like in R. It's a, actually a tag here, and actually this is the is the Comment, comment tag. Um, the, this special tag here in, in the comment is, is, is also necessary if you want to, to make the C++ function available to, in the R environment, you need to also include this, this export tag. And here we have a, a C++ function. Um, you, you will see a, a, there is a lot of similarities with, with our code, especially for a, a basic example like that. Like here is the name of the function. And you, I, I think the, the main difference of, uh, of uh, a language that is statically typed against a, a, a language like R that is dynamically typed is that in R, usually you don't need to, to say what kind of variable you are using. If you are using an, an integer, if it's numeric, if it's a string, if it's a character, you usually, uh, in, in R, you just have to deal with that. If you are trying to convert, if you are trying to mix things that aren't equal, but in C++, you need to say every time what, what which, um, which kind of variable you are using. That's why you have this int 
this int, for example, is to say that this function needs an argument that is an integer. If you pass an argument that is something else, it will throw some error or, or will be processed in a wrong way. And it also says that this function expects it to return an integer. That, that's why you have this integer in the beginning of the of the function. It's 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 a um, it's, it's it's a difference between between like Python R and those dynamically typed. They, they, they are dynamically typed and in languages that are statically typed. You you need to every time say which kind of variable you you are using. Um, but you can see that. That you, for example, here it, it, it's a function that performs a mathematical operation. You just need to, to to perform a basic operation. Say it will return the result of it, and it it needs to be an integer, and it's already a. And if you save that in a in a file, it will it will be the the source code of the C C plus plus. Um, another difference from R and C plus plus is that. Uh, since it's a compiled compiled language, just having the source code don't, don't don't means that you have a program. You need to compile that code in a, to it will when, when you compile the code, it will becomes a binary that is another file, and that binary you can execute to to. So, so that the computer can understand the binary code and perform the, the operation that you are expecting. Um, but one thing that the, this RCPP package does is exactly having all the all the tools and the and the bindings to the tools, so you can just add the the source code, the C source code inside your R package, and when you are building your R package, it will already convert it to it will compile it to the binary to the binary um, to, to the binary form of it and and will make it available inside your your R package. So it's um and in the C RCPP package already have this integration with the R Studio IDE. Uh, so, so like I said, if you use the build and reload um, button inside the the uh, in the in this the in the build and uh, in the build panel of our studio, you have this build build and reload. No, wait, what is it? Uh, install and restart. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it changed there. Yeah, it's it's in the yeah the, this name. No, no. Uh, I know. I remember. Right here. Yeah, I think it changed the name here. Yeah, it's now install and restart. It will already generate the 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 compiled code, um, and you can also um, yeah that, that, that that's the, the basic functionality. Um, you can document the 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 C plus plus code in, in a similar fashion. The, that we use for for our code, like the, uh, it has the integration with the R Oxygen two package for, me. so so you can document the uh, the arguments of the function. You can say now that you are going to export, and when you compile this, um, when you build the package now that will compile the C plus plus code, it will automatically generate. This um, the R code that actually is inside your package when you're building your package, it will automatically generate an R function that actually calls the C function inside your package. You so we, uh, everyone is following here, it's okay. So, okay, so we did this is the basic if you um. Do that. We will. You will already have some some kind of R code that calls um, a C plus plus code. One thing that's really important to address in this in this part is is that you you actually have to export your 
your function, so it is available inside R, but we, you could also uh, use uh, different tags. So you can um, even allow other C++ code in other packages to call the C++ code inside your package. There is an example of a, of a different tag that uses inside the C++ code for, for including, for calling, for make, for allowing your C++ code to be called by other C++ code outside of the package. Because actually, if you don't do that, your C++ code can only be used by your package when it's installed in, in someone system. So, so some details. And you you can, like I said about the, the header files, you can, um, for example, th there are some C++ libraries that, that are, um, that could be installed in the system. So you can call other, other C++ libraries. Um, and uh, now, now I'm going to, to talk a bit about the, the workflow of how to use that. So it, can, it maybe becomes less abstract. Um, I, I, I will actually say that I, I actually don't never wrote a C++ code. I, I was just trying to rub, rub my head around it during the, while I was reading the book. But, but, I, yeah. I, but actually, yeah. over you, you can say, you can say. No, I just want to I say that we're all in the same boat. The same boat. Yeah, <laughs> I was just, um, but especially, like I said, the, the main focus of this chapter is not um, teaching C++ code or C code, it's, it's uh, making you able to understand when a package has C++ code inside it and how to deal with that and how, how you will build the package and, and especially uh, understand why sometimes a package don't install in the system and it's also important because um, for C++ code to, um, actually the compiled C++ code don't have any dependence. If you have your binary in your system and, and the code is, how can I say, uh, oper oh, operational system independent, it will run. You, 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 it's not like R that you need to install R, you need to install all the packages. The binary is like for uh, now a Windows package would be like in uh, a file dot exz and exec table. If you have this exec table, it will run and you don't need anything else. That, that, that's the binary. Um, but like we already talk, talked about how our code is actually compiled in binary form when it's installed in the system, the C++ code also need to be compiled in a system dependent man man manner. So you, if you are building C++ code inside in a package, you need to have the build tools that we, we talked in the first chapters. You, you need to have um, actually um, the, 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 the they actually talked about it here in this topic, the make files cause, no, not the make files. Um, it actually says that it will use the make, make is a, is a program that get, gets some instructions to build things. <laughs> and it's, it's commonly used in, in Unix and Linux environments as instructions of how to build programs or, or preparing the environment. Um, and and to, and and in the build tools that that is usually installed when you are preparing to build things in your computer, uh, a minimal make would be installed even if it's in Windows or or Mac or, or Linux. Um, but there there are some different differences between between different operational systems and. Um, so, so you, you need to, and, and, and science C++ also is much more integrated with the system, I would say, 
you, you sometimes you need to address more um, advanced stuff like understanding the, the difference between um, between the flags and and instructions of the the CPU things like that. But it's like I said, I I, I, um, I, I think it's not the the main topic of this this chapter to address details of how C plus plus work, um, and yeah, and, and they also address that there is this the, the, the like I said, if you need to use a specific version of the make um, program that that builds the the compiled code that that gets the instructions and build it, you you can. In your description file of your R package, you can um, you, you can have this the system requirement tag to say that um, that sometimes you 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 want a, a specific version of the make program, for example the the GNU project make version. So you you can um, you you can include the, this information in your package to make it. Um, it, it, so 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 the so the R environment knows that, that it it needs the, that version and, and especially if you if, and, 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 and if you are sending your package to cron if you're trying to release it you need to 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 have your your code compiling in in, in in every operational system, Mac, Windows, and Linux, and actually also in Solaris, <laughs> and they they address it here because Solaris have a lot of different um, build tools. So sometimes code that that will not build in Solaris, you you need to to have the stack and. And then if if your code don't build in Solaris, you and you are sending it to Chrome, you you have to at least um, talk with the Chrome people, like adding the information. Saying, oh, my code don't work in Solaris, but because of why? But it works in the in the other language, and I want to release it in in the same way. Um, yeah, um, so. Uh, I would try to one one other thing that is important. It's actually I I also have um, good interfaces to other compiled languages, not just C plus plus. But C C plus plus is the most um, it, it's mature, but not mature, but not only mature, but also C plus plus is the language that is. Considered more performant and also have this this really good interface. Like you can pass our objects to the C plus plus code and and back because you you could you can call Fortran code from R. Actually, R is built atop of Fortran, so you don't need to install anything to call Fortran code. That there is this dot Fortran function that that calls Fortran code that that you can run Fortran code directly. I actually never, if you don't need to know Fortran in your life, don't, don't even go near that. <laughs> but especially in, in scientific environment, because actually Fortran was the most common, commonly used language in science during like the, the 60s, 70s. So a lot of places already have a lot of Fortran code that needs to be wrapped in our code. So, but one, one thing that don't work in Fortran code is that interface about getting an R object and passing it directly to the Fortran code. You would need like to save it in a file and read it in the Fortran code. You don't have the same flexibility that you have with the with the with the C plus plus the, the in, in the RCPP integration. Um, in, in the same for Java, you, you have the R Java. But especially, uh, I think for, for everyone here, if you if you already had to deal with um, Java programs that you need to 
install the, 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 the basic Java and it don't work and you need to update Java. I feel like that I, I also don't recommend using Java if you don't need to. <laughs> but but also but, but actually there are a lot of packages on Chrome that use our Java. So it's also good if if you sometime uh, tr was trying to install in a package and it was complaining about not having Java or something you it's good to understand that that it will the pack sometimes is not working because it's not being able to to compile the Java code inside the package, and they also get this note about if you are trying to pass an object for for uh, for the Java call, it, it's actually not performant at all. It's it, especially if you already if you are already used it to how C plus plus integrates with the the R code, the ja uh, it's not good to try to use Java in the same way because it it's it will not be better than just just using using our, our code itself. Um, um, yeah, and 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 they also address this. Actually, this the the this topic is useful even if you if you are if you are not building compiled code is that actually Chrome offers an automated service like a, a remote machine that you can send your code and, tr and and it will try to build your code remotely and, and will send you an, an email after saying, oh, your code couldn't build on a Windows machine or, or, or in the late, latest version of R, in the development version of R. It's good to to have this kind of tools available. Actually, there is a, another package that is this R hub package. R, the R hub package it have these a, lo a lot of different options here. You can try like check on Linux, check on CentOS, Debian, Solaris, uh, different things that that they the these R hub it's not exactly the same as sending it to Chrome, but it's usually faster. Um, for example, if you try to send your code, let me just open it. Um, you, for example, here I'm inside that, that, that if you oh, oops, no. um, have a, an example package with a function inside that, if you just execute that, it will, um, Try to to build the package and send the the package elsewhere. Oh, and actually this one is, but it's not it's not the, the point also. But it's, it's especially if you if you are compi using compiled code, it's, it's really important to test if your if your code building in other systems. Um, and yeah, let, let's go to the. I will do a. A small de demo just showing how to start building it. Um, so the basic workflow is like everything else in this book is using use this. The that is this function use this use C RCPP. Let me stop that. Yeah, there is the use this use RCPP, and actually in the newer versions. You, you will also see that there is this use RCPP Armadillo or use RCPP Eigen. There is like specific versions of RCPP that don't don't bother with that if you don't just bother with that if some someday you 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 will you will be needed. Um, but what this function use RCPP does, it automatically creates in um, a source folder. In your in your root in the root directory of your of your package, where the 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 source code would be stored and that 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 will be used to compile. So, um, if if you are going to do that manually, you would need to create the source folder, then. Um, then adding the in the description that is the special tags the there is this 
linking to and imports, because actually you need to import the, the RCPP package and link to the, the this linking tag in the description file, it's used for, um, you, you don't need to use RCPP to, to link to a, to a binary code, a compiled code, but if you are using RCPP, it will automatically populate this, this the, the namespaces and the, and the description file, the imports and, and the exports. So I will just execute it here. Um, oh, actually it creates um, um, some, it, it will add this, if you see this .o, .so or .dll, there are the compiled libraries that the that are generated when the when the code is compiled. It will add to the git ignore, so you don't you you, you don't need to update that to 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 GitHub or send it to Crunk because you, you just need to send the your source code and your source code needs to be compiled by Cron or actually not by Cron, but it needs to be compiled in the computer when where it's going to be installed. Um, it, it automatically created, added in the description file, if you see here, the, it, it added the RCPP package to the imports and also added this linking to tag and, um, and added the RCPP here. The, this, this file of the description file is, is used to say that there is compiled code in the RCPP package that is, is needed for my package to work. And it also created the, the source here with this code. The, the extension for C, C++ files are, is .cpp. And, and when my, and this, where, where? This linking to RCPP is what makes it available so I can include this CPP header in my package, it's, it's important. So it's the basic, if, if you are going to use RCPP for any kind of C++ code, the, this is the basic, uh, the basic structure that you need in, in the file. And then you can add, um, um you can add any function like the this for example here I, we, we will create a, a function that will be exported and we will also um yeah that 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 needs to be uh, to be built and and and, and exported to the r to the r code to use it so um, it will build when you try to 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 clean and rebuild the the package. It will try to install it, and especially um, every time you install a kind, a, any kind of of R package, a, a lot of a lot of people asks uh, why there is this kind of message every time, like. G++ building, especially if you're installing in Linux, because in Linux, every package is built from source. Uh, there is a lot of messages like that. These messages are actually the, the C++ compiler building the code, compiling the code. So here is, is the kind of messages, like if I, just had this code and executed that in my terminal, it will it would build the the, the compiled code. Um, actually, it didn't throw from any error. So, if you, if we see in the um, okay, and and when you compile the a C plus plus code uh, uh, using the the RCPP package. It automatically creates this RCPP exports R file that's that 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 actually creates an an R function that calls the the C++ code. 
So now, if I call, like if I load all here, and it will make available in my environment for testing this time skew function. That is actually an R function that calls the C++ code. It's, uh, it's clear. It's just that. With that, I already have in my package R C++ C++ code that is compile, compilable and, um, and available for my R functions. Um, you could create, for example, uh, this is, you uh, You don't have to mod modify the, that file, but for example, I could create, I could create any R function, for example, I can create another um, R file and, and add this code, for example, create a, Expert. Uh, you can create R functions that do more than just calling the, the C++ code. You, I could add normal R code here, like uh, you you read read a file, for example, you read a CSV file, then call a C++ operation, then export something in R. So you can create really complex code and actually call several are C++, C++, C++ code in, in the same R function. You don't need to, to have everything in, in just one C++, C++ code. You can have, because um, especially the, these like the mathematical functions and, and, and functions that need to loop, loop a lot, it, it's good to have it in, in C++ code, it's more performant. So it's, um, you, you can have just this really specific uh, parts of your, of your code as C++, you don't, don't need to, to wrap around all your function in C++. Um, yeah, that's the basic. <laughs> I think I don't have much more to, to talk about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, one thing that I, I always uh, see people doing, especially if, if you get like uh, older packages that, that use C++, most of the time they, the, the C++ code is used to, um, to uh, around for loops, because for loops in C, they are really, really fast. They are really fast. And usually in R, they aren't. Actually, the signs are, 4, 4.0, it actually, they, they enhanced a lot the, the performance of, of loops and, and how vectors are, are stored in R. So it's not all the case would be better in C, C++, but um, especially if you look to the tidyverse packages like the, like the per, poor, poor, poor package, the, the map functions, they, what, what what those packages do is already having C++ code inside it that converts your R code to C++ or, or some kind of witchcraft that, that enhances the, the code. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, that's it, I think. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any good example to show actually. <laughs> Thank you. That helped me get through it. <laughs> that helped me get through it. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly a hot topic. <laughs> it, was, it was over my head. It was over my head. It was over my head. <laughs> like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. I feel well, I'm actually really glad that that's that, that it helped me. <laughs> Because actually, when I I was starting to the, the the first time that I that I tried to program, I actually took a, a C C a C course, and I and I actually learned some kind of C code, like really basic C code, and I learned like to compile code. In, but I after that I never used anything. That I, I just went to Python, R, Perl, and more 
higher level programming language, so I never went back to this kind. But actually, I, I see a lot of RCPP, R, RC plus, C plus plus code use it inside our, our packages, uh, and I and and the most important thing that I that I want to address is exactly that sometimes you have a specific bottleneck in your package that could be addressed with three lines of C plus plus code and or or, or maybe um, importing some C plus plus library that already do what you want so. Having an R package that is a wrapper around a, a common C++ um, C++ library is also a good thing. Yeah. And another reminder is that, like, um, for example, Linux Linux is basically written in C. It's the the kernel, the Linux kernel, the operation system is written in C. So most of the computers and like large scale computers would be already built to run C code. So C code, that, that's why C code is also more performant. There is also another, another language that is taking a lot of um, focus right now that is Rust language. I don't know if you ever heard of Rust because it, it's actually being considered more reliable than C++ and easier to learn than C++. Um, and it's also it's more, it's especially when, when they address memory, how, how you assess memory, C, C code and C++ code. If, if you don't, if you, sometimes you can assess memory that is not available specifically to, to the C code. And they say that Hust, it's the biggest problem we've seen and, and Hust tried to address that and also being more modern. In, so there is, a, there, there is a project that actually started also last year. There is R extend R, there is a group that is trying to integrate some build tools for, for building R packages around Hust code. So we, we, we are going to see also a lot of a lot of Rust, Rust code inside R in the future. I don't know. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> this chapter is really difficult. I mean, to think of making a real example. I a real example. I can, I can, I can yeah, I, I, I don't have any good thing that can. But if you have a for loop that takes more than like 10 exactly. seconds, trying to re-implement that in C would, would be the perfect as example of, of, of how to use that. I just can yeah, and fix the, that. The, the CPP 11 is not in the book, right? Yeah, so book, thanks right? for so, pointing it out. Yeah, actually it's not, but actually um, the CPP 11, um, actually, in the last cohort, they, they talked about it, but it was, like I said, it, it's actually a, a newer package, so it's not exactly um, like I said, it, it's not it's not well honed as RCPP, but it's 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 being ba backed by the R Studio community. It was written by. Um, by the same autos that do most of this, I see the 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 R studio the tidyverse package. So you, it will be well maintained for sure. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's, uh, I sent it in the chat. I will try to find the, the also the host the host project and and send it you know, in, in the in the Slack chat also because the this the, this host project also is getting a lot of a lot of traction in and, and there are some developers that work at like in ggplot and this kind of they are working in this in this project so I, I think it's another 
Okay, okay fine. I found it here. Extender, extender. Yeah, it's it's good. I, I think it will also be be used a lot in the in the future. And just run from Java code and <laughs> and Fortran code. I think GLMnet is written in Fortran, right? So, what? Sorry, um, the package um, the... GLMnet for the regular yeah. regression. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it, it actually calls Fortran. Actually, most of R itself is written in Fortran. Like the the basic R functionality is 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 written. Half in C and half in Fortran code. When, when you call a, like a, a sum function in, in, in R, it, it, it's actually C code inside that or some kind of Fortran, Fortran code. But Fortran is considered one of the most difficult languages to learn. I think it, um, I, I don't know much about Rust, but Rust is considered the, the language that can be be learned in a in a not, in a easy easy way that that can uh, be used for most of the especially if you are not building like an operational system or things that need to do um, to to interact directly with the CPU things like that you um, Rust is a language that can can be can be used for for anything. So I, I actually want to use for just to to learn some some first. I will I will try that in the future. Yeah. So you're not thinking of learning JavaScript. Um. <laughs> Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, it, 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 yeah. It depends of what you are do. You are trying to to do. Like, if you are if you are working with shiny or any kind of web application, you, I would say that definitely you have to to deal with JavaScript and and with HTML and CSS. It's it's really important to to learn all that. But if you are just doing basic data analysis and things in the, in the terminal. I, I don't think JavaScript is the, is the go-to language. It's, it's better to learn R, <laughs> definitely learn R. But also there is, it's cause JavaScript is actually not a, a compiled language. So it don't actually enter in this, in this topic, in this chapter, but there, there are also some packages to integrate JavaScript code in, and especially Node, Node, Node.js, in, inside our, our package. There, there, there are this, there is this kind of, of functionality also. But they, the, like in the same for Python and other languages. But those languages, languages that are not compiled, they don't have the same the same challenges that compiled code have when you are building, especially when you are building your package that, that contains compiled code, you need to be much more, uh, you have to, to be more careful about if your code compiles, if your code, because compiled is not, because your code can, can sometimes be perfect, like don't having any, any error or like running or any logical error, but, but would not compile in a specific version of Windows. And so you, you need to be more careful when shipping code that needs to be compiled. And yeah, yeah that's it. And, and, and there is also a point where using GitHub Actions and automated workflows also is essential if you don't want you to, to to try to, to have to test everything in every operational system. You, you need to have some kind of automated workflow and infrastructure that can test in every variant of operational system. Oof, 
que é depois intenso. <risos> And then and, and there is also the, the topic in the advanced R that, that there, there will be actually addressed the, the details of, of, of when to use, of how to use. Or in, and actually in, in that book, they have a lot of good examples of how to use that. And, and also the book from Dirk Adelbuto about the RCPP itself. It's a rouge book about just using that. <laughs> Well, wow, so I guess this is the second last the session, second right? Last session, right? Yeah, yeah, we are we are approaching the end. So you 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 are going to present next week? Yes, I will. I will. Okay. Um, you um actually we um in the beginning we talked about maybe if someone wanted to discuss different topics or add something that is not covered in the book or as a special session and if you guys have any in consideration or on a special special session or, or we we are going just through the, the end of the book and what, what do you think about it <laughs> i haven't thought about haven't that thought actually. About actually so yeah i'm looking we can just follow. <laughs> I think for me, the obvious the next step obvious. is to do the advanced R book. R book. So, yeah, so. yeah, sure. But actually, do I, I think it go, going through the advanced R book, already knowing mm -hmm. what we saw in this book is, is actually pretty, pretty good because you at least know uh, where to use it and, and how and, and what are the challenges of of how the packages were Definitely. were developed and, and why sometimes the functions are in that way and and I, I think it's it's useful both of the ways are, are good I think that they are really complement the one book complement the other so they they were actually written by the same person so <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, one actually, one person one writes person most writes of the R book, book, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everything that you you are using that, yeah, is written by the same group, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and they are really opinionated about how you do stuff, so you're you're going to do it in their way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't have any opinion, so I'll just take others. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It, well, maybe it's a bit premature, but are any of you interested to, I don't know, go through another uh, book club or I don't know, like the advanced R? Because I think the previous, the current cohort has advanced quite a bit. There are a lot of people who are interested in doing the advanced R actually compared to the R packages. Yeah, yeah actually, this is. The, the second iteration and, and the first iteration was was like a John Harmon itself doing it so uh -huh. so it's it was, you, you, you see that actually that the reason uh, there is not this like this that there is a point that actually is lacking a lot in the art community that is the software engineering mentality now about building building things most of our users don't actually want to build things or 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 are actually afraid of building things because they don't have the like this the engineering aspect of it but actually are that, that that's what this book shows us is, is that i have a lot of good tools that make it really not easy but it's, it's not something from another world to build a package and maintain a package it's actually doable you know, I was thinking an option, um, you know, a lot of the book club um, times don't mesh with my schedule, um, but this one does. So, you know, if we move to maybe take a week or two off, but maybe move into advanced R, I don't know, if that book too. 
I, so, I would like to also. This book works well. I mean, this is yeah, well for me. So. Um, yeah, the, the, there are two books that I am that are, uh, there is the Advanced Dar and also the actually the, the Shiny Mastery book is also a book that I would really appreciate to, to do. But actually, the Shiny Mastery book it's um, like Hadley finished it really recently. It's already it, it is still having a lot of modification in the book. Uh, I think I don't know if it's in the in the right time to. To go through all of it it's really good but, if you want to get started yeah, but, it'll cover the basics it, basic. it really does, it really does. yeah because i have that, I have that all the time <laughs> yeah yeah you you are working with shine it's it's but it has been like, published right so yeah very recently this week i yeah. think i am oh i haven't yeah i haven't saw that uh, I, I saw that he was preparing to release, but I, I haven't seen it released yet. <laughs> I think it has been released by O'Reilly. Okay, nice. It's good. So, yeah. so, so, so yeah. it's, it's so probably it's already, already, already a thing. thing. Goodness, there are too many good books out there. Yeah. <laughs> But I, but I think Advanced R would be the, the best to, to address um, any kind of interest. <laughs> so yeah, I'm also up for... Yeah, my, uh, I, I'm also up for... Yeah, we can take a break for two, three weeks yeah, we and then resume again. That would be really awesome. Yeah, I, really awesome. I would really appreciate that also. That's it. So, yeah, I actually have to go now. And um, yeah, thank you, everyone. And see you all next week. <laughs> yeah. You did a great job. That was tough. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I I want to see the re the release part how it will be. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, see you next week, everyone.